Watch us on YouTube and Facebook. Listen to our podcast and support us on Patreon. Thanks for stopping by. Successful use of the scientific method in the natural sciences led to the same methodology being adapted to better understand the many fields of human endeavor. From this effort, the social sciences have been developed. Political science. Political science is a late arrival in terms of social sciences. However, the discipline has a clear set of antecedents such as moral philosophy, political philosophy, political economy, history, and other fields concerned with normative determinations of what ought to be and with deducing the characteristics and functions of the ideal form of government. The roots of politics are in prehistory. In each historic period in almost every geographic area, we can find someone studying politics and increasing political understanding. In Western culture, the study of politics is first found in ancient Greece. The antecedents of European politics trace their roots back even earlier than Plato and Aristotle, particularly in the works of Homer, Hesiod, Thucydides, Xenophon, and Euripides. Later, Plato analyzed political systems, abstracted their analysis from more literary and history-oriented studies, and applied an approach we would understand as closer to philosophy. Similarly, Aristotle built upon Plato's analysis to include historical empirical evidence in his analysis. An ancient Ancient Indian treatise on statecraft, economic policy, and military strategy by Kautilya and Vihupta, who are traditionally identified with Chakya, c. 350-283 BCE. In this treatise, the behaviors and relationships of the people, the king, the state, the government superintendents, courtiers, enemies, invaders, and corporations are analyzed and documented. Roger Bosch describes the Arthasastra as a book of political realism, a book analyzing how the political world does work, and not very often stating how it ought to work, a book that frequently discloses to a king what calculating and sometimes brutal measures he must carry out to preserve the state and the common good. During the rule of Rome, Famous historians such as Polybius, Livy, and Plutarch documented the rise of the Roman Republic and the organization and histories of other nations, while statesmen like Julius Caesar, Cicero, and others provided us with examples of the politics of the Republic and Rome's empire and wars. The study of politics during this age was oriented toward understanding history, understanding methods of governing, and describing the op- of governments. With the fall of the Western Roman Empire, there arose a more diffuse arena for political studies. The rise of monotheism and, particularly for the Western tradition, Christianity, brought to light a new space for politics and political action. During the Middle Ages, the study of politics was widespread in the churches and courts. Works such as Augustine of Hippo's The City of God synthesized current philosophies and political traditions with those of Christianity, redefining the borders between what was religious and what was political. Most of the political questions surrounding the relationship between church and state were clarified and contested in this period. Period. In the Middle East and later other Islamic areas, works such as the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam and Epic of Kings by Ferdowsi provided evidence of political analysis, while the Islamic Aristotelians such as Avicenna and later Maimonides and Averroes continued Aristotle's tradition of analysis and empiricism, writing commentaries on Aristotle's works. During the Italian Renaissance, Niccolo Machiavelli established the emphasis of modern political science on direct empirical observation of political institutions and actors. Later, the expansion of the scientific paradigm during the Enlightenment further pushed the study of politics beyond normative determinations. In particular, the study of statistics, to study the subjects of the state, has been applied to polling and voting. In the 20th century, the study of ideology, behavioralism, and international relations led to a multitude of pulsi subdisciplines including rational choice theory, voting theory, game theory, also used in economics, cephology, political geography slash geopolitics, political psychology slash political sociology, political economy, policy analysis, public administration, 
comparative political analysis, and peace studies slash conflict analysis. Geography. The history of geography includes many histories of geography, which have differed over time and between different cultural and political groups. In more recent developments, geography has become a distinct academic discipline. Geography derives from the Greek gamma epsilon omega gamma rho alpha phi alpha, geographia, a literal translation of which would be to describe or write about the earth. The first person to use the word geography was Eratosthenes, 276 to 194 BC. However, there is evidence for recognizable practices of geography, such as cartography or map making before the use of the term geography. Linguistics His Historical linguistics emerged as an independent field of study at the end of the 18th century. Sir William Jones proposed that Sanskrit, Persian, Greek, Latin, Gothic, and Celtic languages all shared a common base. After Jones, an effort to catalog all languages of the world was made throughout the 19th century, and into the 20th century. The publication of Ferdinand de Saussure's Cours de Linguistique Générale created the development of descriptive linguistics. Descriptive linguistics and the related structuralism movement caused linguistics to focus on how language changes over time, instead of just describing the differences between languages. Noam Chomsky further diversified linguistics with the development of generative linguistics in the 1950s. His effort is based upon a mathematical model of language that allows for the description and prediction of valid syntax. Additional specialties such as sociolinguistics, cognitive linguistics, and computational linguistics have emerged from the collaboration between linguistics and other disciplines. Economics The basis for classical economics forms Adam Smith's An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of the Wealth of Nations, published in 1776. Smith criticized mercantilism, advocating a system of free trade with the division of labor. He postulated an invisible hand that regulated economic systems made up of actors guided only by self-interest. Karl Marx developed an alternative economic theory, called Marxian economics. Marxian economics is based on the labor theory of value, and assumes the value of a good to be based on the amount of labor required to produce it. Under this assumption, capitalism was based on employers not paying the full value of workers' labor to create profit. The Austrian school responded to Marxian economics by viewing entrepreneurship as the driving force of economic development. This replaced the labor theory of value with a system, system of supply and demand. In the 1920s, John Maynard Keynes prompted a division between microeconomics and macroeconomics. Under Keynesian economics macroeconomic trends can overwhelm economic choices made by individuals. Governments should promote aggregate demand for goods as a means to encourage economic expansion. Following World War II, Milton Friedman created the concept of monetarism. Monetarism focuses on using the supply and demand for money as a method for controlling economic activity. In the 1970s, monetarism has adapted into supply-side economics which advocate reducing taxes as a means to increase the amount of money available for economic expansion. Other modern schools of economic thought are New Classical Economics and New Keynesian Economics. New Classical Economics was developed in the 1970s, emphasizing solid microeconomics as the basis for macroeconomic growth. New Keynesian Economics was created partially in response to New Classical Economics and deals with how inefficiencies in the market create a need for control by a central bank or government. The, ab the above history of economics reflects modern economic textbooks, and this means that the last stage of science is represented as the culmination of its history, Kuhn, 1962. The invisible hand 
mentioned in a lost page in the middle of a chapter in the middle of the wealth of nations, 1776, advances as Smith's central message. It is played down that this invisible hand acts only frequently, and that it is no part of his, the individual's, intentions because competition leads to lower prices by imitating his invention. That this invisible hand prefers the support of domestic to foreign industry is cleansed often without indication that part of the citation is truncated. The opening passage of the wealth containing Smith's message is never mentioned as it cannot be integrated into modern theory. Wealth depends on the division of labor which changes with market volume and on the proportion of productive to unproductive labor. Psychology The end of the 19th century marks the start of psychology as a scientific enterprise. The year 1879 is commonly seen as the start of psychology as an independent field of study. In that year Wilhelm Wundt founded the first laboratory dedicated exclusively to psychological research in Leipzig. Other important early contributors to the field include Hermann Ebbinghaus, a pioneer in memory studies, Ivan Pavlov, who discovered classical conditioning, William James, and Sigmund Freud. Freud's influence has been enormous, though more as a cultural icon than a force in scientific psycholo psychology. The 20th century saw a rejection of Freud's theories as being too unscientific, and a reaction against Edward Titchener's atomistic approach of the mind. This led to the formulation of behaviorism by John B. Watson, which was popularized by B. F. Skinner. Behaviorism proposed epistemologically limiting the psychological study to overt behavior since that could be reliably measured. Scientific knowledge of the mind was considered too metaphysical, hence impossible to achieve. The final decades of the 20th century have seen the rise of a new interdisciplinary approach to studying human psychology, known collectively as cognitive science. Cognitive science again considers the mind as a subject for investigation, using the tools of psychology, linguistics, computer science, philosophy, and neurobiology. New methods of visualizing the activity of the brain, such as PET scans and CAT scans, began to exert their influence as well, leading some researchers to investigate the mind by investigating the brain, rather than cognition. These new forms of investigation assume that a wide understanding of the human mind is possible, and that such an understanding may be applied to other research domains, such as artificial intelligence. So sociology. Ivan Kaldun can be regarded as the earliest scientific systematic sociologist. Modern sociology emerged in the early 19th century as the academic response to the modernization of the world. Among many early sociologists, example, Emil Durkheim, the aim of sociology was in structuralism, understanding the cohesion of social groups, and developing an antidote to social disintegration. Max Weber was concerned with the modernization of society through the concept of rationalization, which he believed would trap individuals in an iron cage of rational thought. Some sociologists, including George Simmel and W. E. B. Dubois, utilized more micro-sociological, qualitative analyses. This micro-level approach played an important role in American sociology, with the theories of George Herbert Mead and his student Herbert Bloomer resulting in the creation of the symbolic interactionism approach to sociology. In particular, just Auguste Comte illustrated with his work the transition from a theological to a metaphysical stage and from this to a positive stage. Comte took care of the classification of the sciences, as well as a transit of humanity towards a situation of progress attributable to a re-examination of nature according to the affirmation of sociality, as the basis of the scientifically interpreted society. Amer American sociology in the 1940s and 1950s was dominated largely by Talcott Parsons, who argued that aspects of society that promoted structural integration were, therefore, functional. This structural functionalism approach was questioned in the 1960s when sociologists came to see this approach as merely a justification for inequalities present in the status quo. In reaction, conflict theory was developed, which was based in part on the philosophy of Karl Marx. 
Conflict theorists saw society as an arena in which different groups compete for control over resources. Symbolic interactionism also came to be regarded as central to sociological thinking. Irving Goffman saw social interactions as a stage performance, with individuals preparing backstage and attempting to control their audience through impression management. While these theories are currently prominent in sociological thought, other approaches exist, including feminist theory, post-structuralism, rational choice theory, and postmodernism. Ar archaeology The development of the field of archaeology has its roots in history, and with those who were interested in the past, such as kings and queens who wanted to show past glories of their respective nations. The 5th century BCE Greek historian Herodotus was the first scholar to systematically study the past and perhaps the first to examine artifacts. In the Song Empire, 960 to 1279, of Imperial China, Chinese scholar officials unearthed, studied, and cataloged ancient artifacts. The 15th and 16th centuries saw the rise of antiquarians in Renaissance Europe who were interested in the collection of artifacts. The antiquarian movement shifted into nationalism as personal collections turned into national museums. It evolved into a much more systematic discipline in the late 19th century and became a widely used tool for historical and anthropological research in the 20th century. During this time there were also significant advances in the technology used in the field. The OED first cites archaeologists from 1824. This soon took over as the usual term for one major branch of antiquarian activity. Archaeology from 1607 onwards initially meant what we would call ancient history generally, with the narrower modern sense first seen in 1837. Anthropology Anthropology can best be understood as an outgrowth of the Age of Enlightenment. It was during this period that Europeans attempted systematically to study human behavior. Traditions of jurisprudence, history, philology, and sociology developed during this time and informed the development of the social sciences of which anthropology was a part. At the same time, the Romantic reaction to the Enlightenment produced thinkers such as Johann Gottfried Herder and later Wilhelm Dilthey whose work formed the basis for the culture concept which is central to the discipline. Traditionally, much of the history of the subject was based on colonial encounters between Western Europe and the rest of the world, and much of 18th and 19th century anthropology is now classed as scientific racism. During the late 19th century, battles over the study of man took place between those of an anthropological persuasion, relying on anthropometrical techniques, and those of an ethnological persuasion, looking at cultures and traditions, and these distinctions became part of the later divide between physical anthropology and cultural anthropology, the latter ushered in by the students of Franz Boa. In the mid-20th century, much of the methodologies of the earlier anthropological and ethnographical study were re-evaluated with an eye towards research ethics, while at the same time the scope of the investigation has broadened far beyond the traditional study of primitive cultures, scientific practice itself is often an arena of anthropological study. The emergence of paleoanthropology, a scientific discipline that draws on the methodologies of paleontology, physical anthropology, and ethology among other disciplines and increasing in scope and momentum from the mid-20th century, continues to yield further insights into human origins, evolution, genetic and cultural heritage, and perspectives on the contemporary human predicament as well. Emerging Disciplines During the 20th century, many interdisciplinary scientific fields have emerged. Examples include Communication studies combine animal communication, information theory, marketing, public relations, telecommunications, and other forms of communication. Com Computer science, built upon a foundation of theoretical linguistics, discrete mathematics, and electrical engineering, studies the nature and limits of computation. Subfields include computability, computational complexity, database design, computer networking, 
artificial intelligence, and the design of computer hardware. One area in which advances in computing have contributed to more general scientific development is by facilitating large-scale archiving of scientific data. Contemporary computer science typically distinguishes itself by emphasizing mathematical theory in contrast to the practical emphasis of software engineering. Material science has its roots in metallurgy, mineralogy, and crystallography. It combines chemistry, physics, and several engineering disciplines. The field studies metals, ceramics, glass, plastics, semiconductors, and composite materials. Metascience, also known as meta-research, is the use of the scientific methodology to study science itself. Metascience seeks to increase the quality of research while reducing waste. The replication crisis is the result of metascientific research. Academic study. At as an academic field, the history of science and technology began with the publication of William Wool's History of the Inductive Sciences, first published in 1837. A more formal study of the history of science as an independent discipline was launched by George Sarton's publications, Introduction to the History of Science, 1927, and the Isis Journal, founded in 1912. Sarton exemplified the early 20th century view of the history of science as the history of great men and great ideas. He shared with many of his contemporaries a Whiggish belief in history as a record of the advances and delays in the march of progress. The history of science was not a recognized subfield of American history in this period, and most of the work was carried out by interested scientists and physicians rather than professional historians. With the work of I, Bernard Cohen at Harvard, the history of science became an established subdiscipline of history after 1945. The history of mathematics, the history of technology, and the history of philosophy are distinct areas of research and are covered in other articles. Mathematics is closely related to but distinct from natural science, at least in the modern conception. Technology is likewise closely related to but differs from the search for empirical truth. History of science is an academic discipline with an international community of specialists. Main professional organizations for this field include the History of Science Society, the British Society for the History of Science, and the European Society for the History of Science. Theories and Sociology of the History of Science Much of the study of the history of science has been devoted to answering questions about what science is, how it functions, and whether it exhibits large-scale patterns and trends. The sociology of science in particular has focused on how scientists work, looking closely at how they produce and construct scientific knowledge. Since the 1960s, a common trend in science studies, the study of the sociology and history of science, has been to emphasize the human component of scientific knowledge and to de-emphasize the view that scientific data are self-evident, value-free, and context-free. The field of science and technology studies, an area that overlaps and often informs historical studies of science, focuses on the social context of science in both contemporary and historical periods. Humboldtian science refers to the early 19th century approach of combining scientific fieldwork with the age of romanticism sensitivity, ethics, and aesthetic ideals. It helped to install natural history as a separate field, gave a base for ecology, and was based on the role model of scientist, naturalist, and explorer Alexander von Humboldt. The later 19th century positivism asserted that all authentic knowledge allows verification, and that all authentic knowledge assumes that the only valid knowledge is scientific. A major subject of concern and controversy in the philosophy of science has been the nature of theory change in science. Karl Popper argued that scientific knowledge is progressive and cumulative, Thomas Kuhn, that scientific knowledge moves through paradigm shifts and is not necessarily progressive, and Paul Feyerabend, that scientific knowledge is not cumulative or progressive, and that there can be no demarcation in terms of method between science and any other, any other form of investigation. The mid-20th century 
saw a series of studies relying upon the role of science in a social context, starting from Thomas Kuhn's The Structure of Scientific Revolutions in 1962. It opened the study of science to new disciplines by suggesting that the evolution of science was in part sociologically determined, and that positivism did not explain the actual interactions and strategies of the human participants in science. As Thomas Kuhn put it, the history of science may be seen in more nuanced terms, such as that of competing paradigms or conceptual systems in a wider matrix that includes intellectual, cultural, economic, and political themes outside of science. Partly by selection and partly by distortion, the scientists of earlier ages are implicitly presented as having worked upon the same set of fixed problems and under the same set of fixed canons that the most recent revolution in scientific theory and method made seem scientific. For Further studies, e.g. Jerome Ravitt's 1971 Scientific Knowledge and its social problems refer to the role of the scientific community as a social construct in accepting or rejecting objective scientific knowledge. The science wars of the 1990s were about the influence of especially French philosophers, which denied the objectivity of science in general or seemed to do so. They described as well differences between the idealized model of a pure science and the actual scientific practice, while scientism, a revival of the positivism approach, saw in precise measurement and rigorous calculation the basis for finally settling enduring metaphysical and moral controversies. However, more recently some of the leading critical theorists have recognized that their postmodern deconstructions have at times been counterproductive and are providing intellectual ammunition for reactionary interests. Bruno Latour noted that dangerous extremists are using the very same argument of social construction to destroy hard-won evidence that could save our lives. Was I wrong to participate in the invention of this field known as science studies? Is it enough to say that we did not mean what we meant? The plight of many scientific innovators. One recurring observation in the history of science involves the struggle for recognition of first-rate scientists working on the periphery of the scientific establishment. For instance, the great physicist Lord Rayleigh looked back, cited here, on John James Waterston's seminal paper on the kinetic theory of gases. The history of the neglect of Waterston's pathbreaking article, Rayleigh felt, suggests that a young author who believes himself capable of great things would usually do well to secure favorable recognition of the scientific world before embarking upon higher flights. William Harvey's experiences led him to an even more pessimistic view. But what remains to be said about the quantity and source of the blood which thus passes, is of so novel and unheard of character that I not only fear injury to myself from the envy of a few, but I tremble lest I have mankind at large for my enemies, so much doth won't and custom, that becomes as another nature, and doctrine has once sown and that hath struck deep root, and respect for antiquity, influence all men. In more general terms, Robert K. Merton remarks that the history of science abounds in instances of basic papers having been written by comparatively unknown scientists, only to be rejected or neglected for years. Watch us on YouTube and Facebook. Listen to our podcast on any of these platforms. Anchor. Breaker. Google Podcasts. Overcast. Pocket Casts. Radio Public. Spotify. Support us on Patreon. Thanks for stopping by. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.